He decided to be a voice for the common man. And he builds the most popular show in cable news by far. And he's being won out of corporate media. That says something about what they think about the common man. I sit and look at Tucker Carlson, and I've been coming on his show, it seems like, for eight, nine years. I don't even know how long it shows, but I was living out in Los Angeles. I was coming on his show. I don't know how long it's been, but it's been a long time. And I've watched Tucker Carlson get closer and closer to God and get closer and closer to understanding what's at the heart of what's going on in America. There's a spiritual war going on, good versus evil. You know, when I first saw this, I thought, dismiss it. More the same from Jason Whitlock, nonsensical rhetoric. It's what he does best. But then I paused and I said, let's analyze this. And I realized this time Jason Whitlock makes perfect sense, as in dollars and cents. What Jason Whitlock has watched over the past nine years, teaming up with Tucker, is his bank account. He's watched it swell until a couple days ago. He was eating real good off of Tucker Carlson. This is about the money. You'd be sad too if your money went away. Poof, just like that, it's gone. Fox, the one place that consistently let Whitlock pontificate in this way while paying him gobs of money. I know it was gobs of money. It's suddenly gone. And if you look at it objectively, you have no choice but to reach certain conclusions. Like, this is an attack on God. And what side am I going to be on? Uh, not that one. But I'm willing to play along, okay? We can pretend that Whitlock's commentary is backed by his true beliefs. Just for a minute, we'll play along. If you are a believer, Tucker Carlson's show, the lies, the racism, misogyny, venom that he spewed nightly, often with Jason's assist, it was indeed an attack on God. You see how that works? You just have to be thoughtful about it, just a little thoughtful. And there's also a common theme. I don't know if Whitlock's lazy or if this just um, gets his juices flowing creatively. He weaves this common theme throughout a lot of his commentary, this biblical war. We have to think about going our separate ways. And, and whether that's through secession or whether that's through some sort of national divorce, it has to be on the table because you just can't find common ground with people this delusional who think that they're God and they can make up the rules. And, and so I, I, I just, I, I don't see a pathway forward for those of us that uh, respect America's founding, have traditional values, have a faith in God. We got to separate. Now, see, I think he's onto something here, too. Uh, you probably do need to separate if someone is delusional, thinks they're God, believes they're always right, tells constant lies, does not respect what America the Beautiful was actually founded on. Some pretty fake news ideals like protecting individual rights, just not for everyone. I'm sorry if you're that weak and your convictions are that weak and your faith that weak, that you would rather be on the devil's side than deal with the discomfort of admitting, hey, I was wrong. I've been thinking the wrong thing. I've been supporting the wrong group. Tucker Carlson could sell out and keep taking every dime Fox News had. They would have paid that dude 50, 60, 70 million dollars a year. It appears from the outside like, no, nah, he'd rather tell the truth. He'd rather face the persecution and have AOC and everybody else and Keith Olbermann and all the other idiots, all the other satanic idiots calling him names and calling him a white supremacist. He'd rather stand on that truth then just take the paycheck and submit. I respect the hell out of it. 
Whitlock is always making sure to include a call to action in his commentary. Can someone get Tucker off the cross? What's weak is a guy who is so lamenting his missing bag that he's anointed a charlatan, who, by the way, can't even say it with a straight face, didn't leave Fox on his own accord to go somewhere and tell the truth. The devil is in the details here, and the details are all about the money. This latest monologue was Jason Whitlock's paying homage to the guy who kept him paid all these years because he wants and maybe he needs more of it. He mentioned that sum, $60, $70 million a year, because that's the kind of number that's orgasmic to a guy like Tucker. And Tucker is listening. He's keeping count, that scorecard he loves so much. And when he fully sheds his dead fox skin, he still has more to exfoliate, trust me, and he slithers back out into our every day, you will smell it. And no matter how pungent the smell, Jason Whitlock, he'll be back there desperately clinging to Tucker Carlson's coattails. Follow the money.